Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Let's go over some uh, breaking the urban legends of life. Maybe I should change my channel to that. And this is the problem is that everybody is living in these urban legends. You think something happened because Uncle Mickey Ducker told you something or your teacher, the ignorant boob he is that knows nothing and lives in some sort of perverse sexual fantasy of wanting to molest children like so many particularly female teachers do. Uh, the bottom line is, is that um, you've le heard a lot of stuff. Oh, I lived there. I was in the military and was in this place. I know what's going on. Ah, uh, did you ever leave the base? Oh, uh, one time on Saturday night, I was so drunk I passed out on the other side of the fence. Yeah, I know what it's like. Oh, I know Mickey. He's from there. Yeah, he told me all the truth. Ah, uh, this is the kind of stuff that you live in because nobody really has any understanding. To bring this down to something that is more... Uh, understandable for Americanos. Uh, do you really, whatever states you live in, let's say you live in California, which I live most of my life in, do you know what's going on in Texas? You know, unless there's a hurricane in that area or something like that, and then you get little pictures of it. I mean, Texas is a huge state. Is the entire state been hit by a hurricane that's annihilating it? Uh, so all these things uh, are very misunderstood and you don't understand what's going on. You don't understand local politics unless you're there, what kind of people there, how they act. All of that stuff is completely misunderstood. And you won't get anything basically outside of your area. I lived in Los Angeles area most of my life. I don't know what on San Diego. I don't know what went on in San Francisco. These are places that are a hundred miles away, a couple of hundred miles away, or even in cities that are 50 miles away. What's going on in a town like Santa Barbara when you live in Los Angeles? What you don't know. News is based on local. You don't want to hear what's going on in San Francisco if you live in Los Angeles. So you're not going to pay attention to that. And does that have value in your life? Well, it really doesn't, but it does in the bigger picture. So nobody knows anything. So if you live in Florida, you have no idea what's happening in California. Yeah, Uncle Bill lives there. I talk to him on the phone, you know, when he's sober and ain't screaming Jesus. Uh, we, we get the facts from him because he's a good man. You know, this is the kind of stuff you live in you don't understand. Where do you live? Well, I'm from Malibu. I know exactly what Southern California is all about. Yes, my neighbor, Mel Gibson, informs me of the community. Yeah, that's a good uh, way to represent Los Angeles, Malibu, Beverly Hills, or anything. Or even reverse, you know, living in uh, East Los Angeles and Compton. Yeah, that's L.A. Well, that ain't L.A. Every neighborhood is different. So all around the world, it's the same. It's even worse. And then there were parts of countries. Um, there's the wine country in France, there's Paris, and then of course North and South and everybody hates each other, even inter-country, so you have problems and there's huge cultural differences from countries that border each other. The French are very different than the Netherlanders as they call it now, they're not Hollandish anymore, uh, or from the Germans or from the whatever is uh, pooping around in that place there. There's huge cultural differences. So we have to understand that, and people think quite differently. So that's why the European community or any organization never will work. And it really doesn't work too well in the United States either, because you have radically different belief systems that are constantly pulling on each other. Uh, so you've got people don't get along. So they go to states where people kind of agree with them. So if you're a hillbilly, crazy, hateful, rotten, uh, born again Christian, well, you end up in Texas with cowboy hats and cowardice police and criminals. Yeah, because we love that. Jesus loves criminals. So the whole idea, uh, all the things that, that go with these kind of realities and depending on where you're from. So there's great differences in how people see things. So it's all quite fascinating. It's even worse, of course, when you get overseas. Now, let's gonna, we're going to tell you why Germany has an $80 billion surplus, which, of course, goes to all their criminals and a criminal society that Germany is to begin with. I'm going to show you receipts 
from the infamous Lidl market, which is all over the United States. Arnold Schwarzenegger even is doing commercials for them in the U.S. Yeah, Arnie, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm playing like I'm German when I'm really an Austrian. <laughs> yeah, he wants to make sure nobody knows he's a Hitlerite. So the whole idea is that uh, what people don't understand is sales tax. So, now, in general... I'm not sure what it's went up to in different states now, but in general, most sales taxes, anyone, uh, state sales tax, and there are no federal sales taxes. I believe there should be. Uh, I'm a firm believer in sales tax and luxury taxes, etc. If you can spend $60,000 for a car or more, you ought to be uh, taxed another ten dollars or $15,000 for that luxury of buying something that isn't needed. So, you buy guns, you buy alcohol, you should pay heavy taxes on them. I believe in that. And we're going to see what going overboard means in the uh, fascist land of Arnold. Uh, so the whole idea is that, um, so most sales tax runs at 4 to 7 maybe 8% somewhere. I don't think so. And that's called general sales tax. Now, one thing that isn't taxed anywhere in the United States, as far as I'm aware of, is food. So if you buy something that is food, and this pretty much almost means anything in the supermarket. I don't know if alcohol is generally sales tax or not. I think it may be, but without getting into the details, it doesn't matter. But we're going to show you how ridiculous a lot of this stuff is and how uh, the American people are robbed of the funds they should be getting by having improper taxes. And of course, one of the problems with taxes is that all it does is go to the rich, but there's no difference uh, in Europe either, where uh, there's so much corruption and fraud that people are paid tens of millions of dollars uh, to build stuff that uh, they just put all in their pocket. It's a criminal system. This is why you will see particularly Germans all over the world living like kings, and where's the money coming from? And it's coming from corruption. So, um, of course, it's not unique to Germany. It's but they certainly do a supreme value of it with their incompetency, their backwardness, their dirtiness, their lack of invention, uh, the complete bozo way of doing everything that they do. So you can guarantee if something's going to be done wrong, a German will be doing it. Unlike the, again, the urban myth that there's some sort of um, efficiency that Germans do. I just heard a, a investment advisor telling him how much he knew and talking about the Germans, which he knew nothing about because he was a bozo. So, um, and again, everybody's got, the, he's living in the urban legend. And of course, you've got an entire community of people that stand behind their corruptness and protect each other um, and tell you lies. So the bottom line is, Let's give it an average. That the average sales tax in America is six to seven percent. Now let's look at the tax scale here. Here's the tax scale and reason why there's eighty billion dollars in surpluses. A, A generally means food, all foods, meat, baby food, cereal. Um fruit, vegetables, all the stuff that we would consider really food. But uh, there's other things that aren't food. 7% tax. Now, can you imagine if all the food in the United States, it must be trillions of dollars spent on food in the United States, and we had 7% tax from that, that we could designate for Social Security, for medical, billions trillions of dollars in tax money that we could have if we charge 7%. And I think that's too high. I think food probably should be around 4%. But there ain't that many things that uh, Germany considers, you know, the Gouda, the Dutchies, consider food. And we're going to talk about what is considered food. Uh, but here we go, 9% for anything that isn't considered food. And drinks aren't considered food. Uh, water isn't considered food. That's a drink. That's 9% tax. I'm sorry, 19%. Let me correct that. You can't see too well on air. 19% tax on any non-food item, which includes toilet paper, water, any drink, juice, anything that's liquid. Alcohol, 19%. Can you imagine the taxes 
of 19. Let's round that up to 20%. Imagine if we had 20% tax on all the toilet paper that was sold in the United States. How much money would that generate? It's mind-boggling. We're talking about trillions again. Just like taxing every single stock trade by a penny would generate billions. Things that nobody would miss. Just like nobody would really miss this. Again, I think that this is high. I would tax, depending on what it is, I think alcohol, ammunition, so many things. Junk food should be 20% extra. Um, I think that's a little high. Uh, maybe 12% on toilet paper and tissues and other things. Trillions of dollars that go to that with a country that has 350 million people in it. Compared to the 80 million that you have in Deutschland. You know, the Persian word that was named after the Germans, because that's where they come from. So let's go through this. Oh, you're, you're crazy there, Dr. Thor. What the hell are you talking about? Did you hit your head on one of them beer bottles? Did some leader hosen slap you in the face? Well, I'm afraid it's true. Let's go to it. Again, here it is. Three different things on here. And these are the tax rate. Next to each item you buy has an A or a B telling you the tax rate. And they show it right up here. So let's go through this. Here's milk at the top here. A. Only 7% on the milk. Gee, Dr. Tor, I could drink a lot of that. Kiefer. Cheese. The next two things are cheese and they're A's. Oh, what generous that is. Now the X, the other thing is cheese again. Pudding. Oh, they're generous. Pudding is only, it's considered a food. Rice. Okay, now let's get to the B's. Mineral water. Notice that? Mineral wasa is a B. South African wine is a B. Bourbon. All the essentials of life. B. Another wine from Chile. Of course, you won't see any American wines. You see lots of other wines that they pay more for, but they won't buy the American. And let's hear, let's skip down sesame. What are those? The sesame crackers. Obviously, that's a food. Here we go. Toilet paper. Toiletten. Papaya. It's four ply. I guess, I guess it's worth paying 20% for that, Dr. Door. It's four ply. B. And this is the bottle refund, which they charge you 25 cents for every plastic or bottle in general that you have. Of course, you get that back, but um, I don't know if that's taxed or not. Probably is. Oh, ice cream. It's considered a food. Hey, hey, pudding. Let's go down here. Greek yogurt. Ooh, it's a food. God is so generous. So here we go through all the crap. Is that, what about this? Uh, lemon juice. Is that an A or B? It's a B. Lemon juice is taxable by 20%. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's got a hold on for them. And what about that? Oh, cookies apparently are food. What else we got here? There we go. Chicken breasts. A. What's that other one? Here we go. Kitchen. Paper towels. Kitchen towels. B. Now, again, if that was tax in the United States along with toilet paper at 20% tax on toilet paper and cooking uh, and um, kitchen paper towels, as we call them in the USA. Again, there's milk, which is an A. Let's go through here. Irish butter. Fake Irish butter, by the way, that the Germans copy because people like Irish butter. So they come out with a cheaper brand made in Deutschland. But it's pure. It's still got the Deutsch piss and shit in it. Ooh. Here's cheese is A. Let's go down to another B here. Mineral water again. Oh my god, 
there's a bunch of um, kitchen, uh, again, paper towels, B. And what's that? Yeah. So remember, B is 19%. Food is 7 People would consider 7% to be outrageous in the United States to uh, taxes in general. Bananas, bio-heifer apparently, which is um, oat milk, is a B. Uh, I don't get that, Dr. Tua. I don't quite understand that either, but it's not a real food apparently. Candy bars they consider a real food. Here we go, cosmetic tusha. That is tissues. B. Here we go. What's that? Okay, Linda, Linda Hocken Flesher, which is uh, ground beef. Rinder is beef. So that Scientologist guy named Rinder, well, he was named after beef, obviously an Australian naughty, which he lived up to in later life. Forgive me for I'm a Scientologist. I no longer want to be a naughty, so you should forgive me. Okay, that's the reality. That's why there's an $80 billion surplus uh, that goes on and on and on. Of course, it's never given back to the people. I'm not sure how well it's used for and anything else. There certainly is a huge amount of corruption and fraud in Deutschland on everything. And money, public money, is spent on ridiculous things. There's an actual TV show here in Germany by uh, Mario Barth, Barth, Barth or Bartho, uh, who goes and investigates these things and the ridiculous amounts of money that are spent. And you see this all over Germany where there's big structures in little towns that have no uh, value whatsoever. He just did that in my local town here, and someday I'm going to film this, of a... Um, of an unused uh, soccer uh, field that they built a giant fence around, a whole bunch of buildings that nobody uses, uh, but the local people were paid a fortune for that. So, you know, one dollar for the building project, ten to all the uh, criminals around there that are doing their criminal work in the local community, which they're all paid off for. So, and of course, the inclusive, most people, that's what keeps the secret. That's why if you think that nobody knew what was happening in World War II at the extermination of over 12 million people, that's right, your figures are wrong. You're going to believe a German figure, you're about as loony as a loon can get. You're as crazy as a book's of frogs. So the whole idea is that uh, that's the way it works in this world. But when you undertax people in important areas like that, but you, what the, the problem with taxes are, is that you have to make sure that the money goes to the proper places and is used properly. In San Francisco, California, they're spending $70,000 a year per homeless person. Did you get that? $70,000 a year. Now, that's a damn good income, even in San Francisco, where you could probably uh, easily rent a very nice luxury apartment or even have on the outskirts a decent little house. No. It's going to all the criminals that are instituting those programs and putting the money in their pocket, taking out giant salaries. You know, people like the Red Cross, who have uh, directors that make uh, half a million and some a million uh, to help the poor, of course. We've got to send the Red Cross here to help. Maybe we should start helping with the Red Cross by cutting their salaries down particularly the million-dollar ones, and $2 million in travel expenses that some of these people get that is refunded to them or given to them if they don't spend it on travel. Hmm. Let's donate to the Red Cross. So, unbelievable. Just like I remember 9-11 on the day after that, they, you went to places and said, oh, donate for the Red Cross. I said, you got to be kidding me. Oh, you're a terrible person. And let's remember, this was being recorded in 9-11. And we have to change over our entire building structures to passport materials. Because, you know, they found the passport of all the hijackers, they found their passports on the streets of New York. They survived the plane. Isn't that interesting?
Just amazing. We need to make everything out of rubber and passport material. I've just solved another problem of the world. Until next time, everyone.